I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a kid's easel with a blackboard, a whiteboard, and a paper roll. My kids draw all the time, and that means we have tons of pieces of paper that we have to recycle. Recently on our podcast, Making It, my co-host David Picciuto mentioned that it'd be cool to make an easel with a roll of paper so you could save the drawings. So on this one, I've got a roll of paper, but I've also got a whiteboard behind it, in case you want to use that, and a blackboard on the other side. All right, let's make this thing. This entire project was made with 1x4s, easy to get a hold of and not too expensive. I started by cutting an angle on one end and then measured the length of the leg based on my plans. I cut the same angle at the other end, and then used that one leg as a template to cut three more just like it. I needed to make a bracket to fit at the top of the two legs to hold them at the correct angle. So I laid everything on top of a spacer, lined up the top pieces, and traced the outside. I cut two of these at the same time, so they'd be exactly the same on both sides of the easel. To mount the paper roll, I needed a hole in both legs drilled in the exact same position, so I clamped two legs together and marked the same distance from the outside and the top. I used a Forstner bit, the same size as the dowel that I had, and drilled a hole through both pieces of wood at the same time. I measured down and made a mark where I wanted the bottom roll to be and drilled another hole. But this time, I set the depth of the drill press so it wouldn't go all the way through both pieces of wood. It leaves just a little bit of wood so that the dowel won't run all the way through. It has a way to stop. Then it was time to assemble the side pieces. I lined everything up and made sure to have the pieces turned the right direction and then added some glue and brads to the brackets to hold the legs together. I assembled the other side in the exact same way and I gotta point out that it's really important that the bracket is on the right side and your legs are turned in the correct direction, otherwise the holes won't line up. On one assembly, I went ahead and drilled through the top hole all the way through the bracket and this is where the dowel is gonna enter and the handle is gonna sit. Both leg assemblies were done, so I cut down two panels, one blackboard and one whiteboard, and these are pre-cut panels that you get at the home center. Let me say something real quickly about the cut that I just made. It's not the safest cut in the world, and that's because the distance between the blade and the fence was longer than the depth of the material that was being cut. When you have that particular setup, the piece of material can very easily twist and get bound in between the fence and the blade, and that's when you get kickback. Kickback can be extremely dangerous, and the way around that is to use a crosscut sled to push the piece of wood through. In this case, my crosscut sled was not deep enough to be able to cut that piece of wood, so I took this risk. I went really slowly pushing the wood through, tried to make sure that I didn't let it shift in either direction, and had the blade down as far as it would go. It was still a risk on my part, and I just wanted to make you aware in case you were going to make a similar cut. Alright, let's move on. Temporarily, I just clamped on a piece of wood to hold the two side panels at the correct distance apart. Once I had them at the right distance, I set it up on the table and then marked the area from the top where I wanted the panels to start. I clamped these panels in place and then pre-drilled some holes right into the 1x4. Both the whiteboard and blackboard material are an eighth of an inch thick and kind of brittle. If you don't pre-drill the holes, you'll probably get a nasty result when you drive in the screws. I drove in the panels on one side and then carefully flipped the whole thing over as it still didn't really have any support. I made marks for the same placement and screwed on the blackboard to the other side. I carefully lifted it down to the ground as it still wasn't fully supported and very, very flexy in a couple of different directions. I cut a few more pieces of 1x4 down to some strips. These make it look nicer, but they also hold the paper flat against the surface once you add the paper roll. I clamped these in place, pre-drilled, and screwed them in, making sure that there was not too much tension on the middle. I just wanted them tight on the outside. This helps the paper to move freely up and down. I fed a dowel in through the top two holes all the way to the outer bracket and then made a mark on the area that was outside of the hole. Using the crosscut sled on my table saw, I lowered the blade and then cut a dado into the dowel. I moved it over and widened the dado just so it would be thicker than the material I was going to use for the lock. I cut down a piece of eighth inch material for the lock, then I had to cut a key with a chisel on the end of the dowel. This will allow the dowel to be locked in place unless you turn it to the specific location where it can lift over the lock. I tested moving the lock up and down to make sure that it was tight enough to hold the dowel in place, but not too tight to where you couldn't get it out. Once I found the best spot, I used some glue and brads to hold it there. I followed the same process for the bottom dowel, but I used a little bit smaller lock and I used CA glue to hold it in place instead of glue and brads. To make a handle for the top roller, I just cut down a square of 1x4 and then found the center by making two diagonals. Where they crossed, I used a compass to make a circle and then cut out that circle on the bandsaw. 
I'm not great on the bandsaw, so I got it pretty close, and then I used a disc sander to get it actually to the line and perfectly circular. Using that same cross point, I drilled a hole all the way through it that was the same size as the dowel. Then I used the router table with a roundover bit to just smooth it out so it was easy and comfortable to turn. I used a flexible sanding block to get it nice and smooth and remove the burn marks from the router. I held it in place and marked its depth on the dowel and then cut the dowel to length. Then I just glued the dowel into the handle making sure that it was flush on the outside. The last thing to make was the tray that goes on the bottom, and this is partially for support, but also just to hold the crayons and chalk and whatever else you're drawing with. I rough cut down the four sides of this tray just to make them easier to deal with, and then went back and cut 45 degree miters on the end of all four pieces. Getting these to fit together is really important, so take your time when you're cutting the miters to make sure that you have them turn the right direction, and each side is the exact correct length. I lowered the blade on my table saw and then cut a dado in the bottom of each one of these pieces to accept the bottom of the tray. Like before, after cutting them all, I moved the fence over just a little bit and then cut them all again, just widening the dado enough to accept the bottom panel. And for that panel, I just used another piece of the whiteboard material. It's nice and slick and I wasn't worried about it getting marked up too badly down there. I added some glue onto the miters before putting this frame together, but I didn't put it in the dado. This way the panel floats freely and can expand and contract as needed. I held these together with some brads, although the glue will eventually be what does all the work once it dries. Once this tray was ready, I slid it in between all the leg assemblies and got it roughly in the right place. Then I cut down a piece of wood to use as a spacer and set each one of the corners in the right place relative to the table. It actually took a couple of passes to get all four corners in the right position because when you move one, everything else moves a little bit as well. With them in place, I pre-drilled some holes from the inside and then drove in screws in all four legs. I just put two screws per leg and it worked just fine. This is gonna be for kids, so I used a sander to smooth out all of the corners and all of the edges. While I'm doing that, let me show you a little mini project sponsored by Sugru. Sugru is a moldable glue that comes in these little packets. This kit also comes with some magnets. So I took about half of a package of Sugru, wrapped it around the magnet, and then smoothed it onto the top of my driver. You can shape it however you want, but overnight it turns into a tough rubber that's permanently attached. So why would I want that on my driver? Well, so all my bits will always be there when I need them. Sugru is really easy to use and it sticks to just about everything. If you do ever need to get it off, you can take it off with a sharp knife. You'll find a lot of uses for this stuff, so go grab some from sugru.com. The last thing was to add in the paper roll. I slid it over the dowel in the bottom and then fed it up under the two pieces of wood over the whiteboard material. When I got it to the top, I just used some masking tape to hold it onto the top rod and then it was time to test it out. I didn't quite tape it parallel to the dowel, and so when I rolled it up for the first time, it was a little bit crooked. But if you fix that, it works great. So that's it. We're all done, and it works out really well. This thing does turn pretty well with a single crank. You could add another handle on the other side to turn them together, and that would make it work even better, but it does work pretty well with one. I will point out that when you have a chalkboard on something like this, the chalk dust gets everywhere. So if that's a thing for you, just put whiteboard on both sides and be done with it. I hope you found this one useful. If you're interested in making your own, I'm gonna have some plans available for this that you can get at my website, iliketomakestuff.com. I'll put a link to those down in the description. I've got lots of other types of videos that you might be interested in, so be sure to check those out and don't forget to subscribe to both of my channels. That's it for this one guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.